All right, we are here on a very oh, special no. Reloading Room Confessions with Todd Hendricks. Oh, no. <laughs> this isn't my reloading room. No, but it is your award room. It's award room. It's my wife's award room. Guess who else is here? I'm Blaine. So I'm just going to show you a handful of... Hey, you, man, you, you pan way too fast. There's no way you can see this. Not to mention all the big game animals. And then let me show you the most important, the most prized item he has. Yep, oh. that's it. That's it. <laughs> but these are his medals. The ones that Grant well, I should say these are some of his medals. And I just don't know how to explain this. Like, there's people I know who have, you know, probably a similar amount of medals. Maybe this guy here. But there aren't many. And I know what it takes to earn one of these let alone 40 or 50 that are scattered around this room. So we're going to take a uh, quick look into his reloading room and into what it takes to be a national champion and a world champion. So Todd, as a world champion, if you have a new F-Class shooter come up to you, what is the first word of advice you would give them? First word of advice? Some guy walks up and says, I'm new to F-Class, Mr. Hendricks. I want to shoot like you. <sighs> Enjoy the process. Because the process is half of the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is finding your cartridge you like. Probably a 284. And then uh, figure out how to uh, make that work the best. All right. Should interview Rhea. <laughs> This is, this is going to be an unconventional reloading room confession because we're not actually going to go into the reloading room. Yeah, we're in the trophy room. <laughs> I mean, you this room... You want to see a trophy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite tool out in the reloading room? The one I couldn't pry out of your cold, dead hands. Well, you know, I've watched all your videos, John. I think that... Uh, I have to say, I've thought about this before, <laughs> that the Giro trimmer is probably the one that saves the most. And time. how many do you have? A couple. <laughs> or more. You have one set up for each caliber, right? I do. Or cartridge. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to waste time switching the stuff around. Right. That is Time hard. is important. Time is all important. we have is time. Right. Todd, do you shoot to load or load to shoot? I started out, uh, I guess, loading to shoot. I'm, that's a tough one, John. Because you enjoy the process of loading. I do. I and my wife helps me. Yeah. Do that. So I I enjoy the process of developing a load. Okay. And the shooting is just a little bit, little tiny part of that. It's how you get there. Yeah. You can't develop a load without the gun. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite part of the reloading process? Mm. That's a tough one, too, because that probably changes. Yeah? Um, this will be a secret, maybe, that comes out. I like to uh, change neck tension. You play around with it? I do a lot. Yeah. Change it, test it, change it, test it. And it, it makes a difference. All right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Todd, what are your non-negotiables for components? Oh, burger bullets and uh, Lapua brass. Okay. Can't get them, you wouldn't shoot it. Well. Within reason. Within reason. All right. Uh, I've known you long enough that I've seen you, you know, come in second place at some big matches. I've also known you long enough that I've seen you win those big matches. What, if anything, was the difference in your head between the times that you were able to win, let's say nationals or Southwest, and the times where you came in second place, or was it just dumb luck that the rewards weren't reversed? No, it's not dumb luck. Um, anytime you finish in the top five or something like that at a nationals, you have the chance to win. So at all those matches when I finished close or won, I probably felt like I shot the same. Okay. And, um, I always had the philosophy of put myself in a chance to win on the last day. Okay. And if you finish second or third, then you put yourself in that position. So let's talk about that. If it's a two-day event, 
how do you approach day one? What? It, no, I. It's all the same. Okay. There's no different approach. Okay. Um, every every uh, relay is the same. You evaluate the conditions and figure out a plan and okay. shoot it. And, okay. and then the next relay, you don't think about the last relay. No matter how good or bad it was. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. You're asking me all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you've been, uh, you've been a teammate of Todd's for quite a number of years now. Yeah. As a passive and active observer of Todd, what, um, like, what do you think allows him to excel and be one of the greatest shooters, shooters ever in the F-Class world. He works really hard at it, and he's mentally tough. And I believe the reason he's so mentally tough is because he knows he already did the work. There's no doubt that what he has is working, so it's just up to him. So you got to put in the work. There's no way around it. You, you echo that? Well, of course. It's easier to be confident once you establish the groundwork. Yeah. And, you know, Eric said it very well. I don't like to brag that stuff up, but that's what it takes. Yeah. And What's something that Todd doesn't do that allows him to succeed? That he doesn't do? Yeah. What doesn't he do that you see other shooters he do? Doesn't, he doesn't assume that, that things are good. He makes sure. He just, he's gonna go test and make sure. Assu There's no precision in assumption. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. That is good. That is good. Hey, you win. <laughs> 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 I, I, I want to talk about something that, that I've seen because I've been around when you won Southwest. I know Eric was around you when you won Nationals, but family's everything for you. I mean, I, being at your house, being around you, uh, uh, family's everything. I remember Southwest National so vividly because you were in number one position. I was in number five position. We we're very close to each other on the shooting line. And I remember all you had to do was shoot clean. I, I think I think you had a couple points to give, but I, I remember you're like, I'm just going to shoot clean. I'll be done. And I, I remember you got up and I had already finished my string. And I, I remember you got up. And you knew you won it, right? Like mathematically, you know that nobody could beat you. And I remember like people were headed your way and the first thing you did was what? Well, I probably called my wife. You did? Yeah. 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 That was awesome to see because, you know, you don't see that a lot. Well, you probably do, but yeah, I, yeah. she's, uh, she's my world. Yeah. And she does, she drops all my powder. You know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Rhea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed. Chance. She knew you were gonna turn. Uh, we, she we, knew you were gonna pan. We were gonna interview somebody, but uh, uh, so so all joking aside, your wife does help with uh, reloading, right? Yeah, she drops. She loads all my. Uh, she 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 uh, weighs all the powder and drops every one charge for me. Yeah, that's and pretty cool. And she does it more precise and uh, accurate than than I can ever come close to. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That Solid that went in there, right? Yes, sir. All right. What's, uh, what's the best advice that you got when you got started that, uh, that has stuck with you? The best advice? Yeah, you know, little tidbit, little nugget, something that's, you know, stuck with you this time, whole time. Hmm. Suck. <laughs> yeah, don't suck. <laughs> From the captain. From the um, captain. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the best advice. It's probably as valid, but um, yeah, I don't even know what the best advice would be, John. No. Yeah. If you think about it, don't suck means you have to put in a lot of work to not suck. Everybody sucks. When they start, everybody's going to suck. And they're gonna suck for a long time. And some people never stop sucking. If they put in the work, they're gonna get a little better. And at some point, they're gonna not suck. You know, and it's it's like who's great? You know, who who defines suck? Right? Is it the is it the scoreboard? Is it or is it your own performance? I feel like I developed my own uh, level of uh, not don't sucking. Because not not sucking doesn't mean you win. I know, but I developed that myself. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, cool. Nobody advised me to not suck. But that would still be good advice. It would be. Yeah. Don't suck. And that means, that just doesn't not mean win. It just means don't suck. You got to put in the work. You got to do the work. Don't just show up and mail it in. You got to do the work. And again, not sucking doesn't mean you won. It just means. My best advice I give to somebody is, uh, and this is uh, not answering your question, it's coming up with a different answer. Sure. My own thing is, uh, I, I tell people, you can uh, shoot to win, which means don't shoot when you don't know what's going to happen, or you can shoot to learn, which means shoot when you're wondering what's going to happen. And then, Knowing that it'll keep you from winning. Well, or you potentially. Yeah, because you don't, know that. you don't know that. Okay. Well, but, but, shoot to win or shoot to learn. Yeah, that. All right. say. You can shoot to win, that's what. And you only shoot when you know what's expected. Yeah. Or shoot to learn is when you go, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Let me shoot here and see what happens. Shooting to win is not as much fun. Shooting to learn is fun. It's like Rattles thing last week. Yeah. You saw me shooting. You wonder, why, why is he shooting? Because I wanted to learn. I, I never into this race. And I go, you know, I'm just going to shoot through everything, see what it's like. And it was tough. Actually, me and Jay looked over and said, what the? What was he shooting for? Yeah, I was shooting. You can't learn in this situation right now. Well, I didn't know that, right? <laughs> you learned that you can't shoot in exactly. that situation. And I learned that, yeah. hey, this, yeah. is, this was stupid. But I didn't know that until I shot it. Shot the team match, I picked my way through it. We did pretty good. I shot the first string, I picked my way through it. And I go, well, I know I can pick my way through it, but can somebody chase it? The next string I'm going to chase, see what happens. And I'm just gonna jump in like a new guy would do and see what would happen. Yeah. Total destruction. But I, I told myself, don't stop. Just go, 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 go. And I kept going. I'm going, oh, this is, I should not be shooting. But <laughs> I already had made up my mind that I was gonna shoot through it. After about eight nines, yeah. when she went to a wiper of my nines, yeah. and we were like, he's gonna stop pretty soon. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna shoot through. Again, I had already made up my mind that I was gonna yeah. jump in and don't stop. Because it didn't look that tricky. Exactly. But it was a, a rattlesnake tricky condition. Did you start out with a mentor? Uh, Brian and uh, Bryce, but mainly Brian. Bache, my buddy Brian. Yeah. You guys met Brian this uh, yeah. weekend. Uh, me and Brian have been friends since second grade. Yeah. Uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we started... Uh, when I slowed down on my work i decided i wanted to shoot a bit more and i started out uh, building hunting rifles or having them built and then starting to reload for that and soon figured out that uh, when you develop a load for your hunting rifle you only get one or two shots a lot of work one or two shots so i knew that my friend brian was uh shooting competitively and i reached out to him and uh he kind of set me down this path. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I was gonna ask you a question, but it's your turn. <laughs> With, uh, you know, I mean, we, we know a lot of shooters and, and uh, you know, some of them are very quick on the scene, do very well all of a sudden, you know, and then sometimes you don't see them again. And then you have other people that, that seem to sort of been around for a while, just, you know, kind of climbing that hill and then once they get to the top, they really seem to stick. You know, we have shooters like you, shooters like Todd. Um, what did you see in Todd as a team captain in terms of, you know, how he entered the sport, how he grew with the sport that made you say, this is a guy I need to have on the team? Well, to be honest, I didn't know Todd. I knew Jay. Okay. And Jay and I had met each other and. uh, I asked Jay to be on the team, and Jay said, I'm not going to join unless Todd joins. And I said, okay. If, you know, so Jay pretty much said, Todd's good. I said, okay, well, if you think he's good, then he's good, right? So I brought him on, <clears throat> and man, I could not have been. That was one of the best things that happened to, to our team, right? And these guys worked really hard they they really relied on each other to push each other 
And sometimes that's what you need, you know. Uh, you know, obviously Todd can just push himself, which is rare. It's rare that somebody can just push themselves. And sometimes you just got to find something, whatever it is, to make you push, push hard and go. Because, you know, it sucks. Sometimes when you do it this much, it sucks getting out there, tuning a rifle. It's just so much work. And, you know, it's not a rifle, it's multiple rifles. Because yeah. you can't just have one rifle. Right. And it's a lot of work. So you just have to have some kind of motivation yeah. to get you out there and tuning and just staying at the top is really hard. It's it just requires a lot of work. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Todd? Oh, absolutely. And do you I remember um, Lenny Basham talking about uh, the Russians are coming or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I use that. I use that all the time. He said he would wake up at four in the morning, and his wife would say the Russians are coming, and I use that because <laughs> I used to have to drive like two and a half to three hours one way to shoot at Cascade. Yeah. And on the way, I always told myself, Lenny Basham said the Russians are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That was my motivation. When uh, when you think about how long you've been in this sport, because you've been in F-Class for, for 11 years? Yeah, something like roughly, that. Maybe roughly 11 bit. years? Yeah. You know, some people would say, man, I don't know if I could stick with it for 11 years, you know, uh, trying to get that national championship. Um, you know, I'm sure in the beginning it was like, hey, I'd really love to win it, really love to win it. Do you feel like it has so much more meaning for you because it took so long? Or do you still wish, hey, I, you know, I wish I could have won it five years ago? Oh, no. Uh, it, it, it feels like a giant honor just to win it when I did, whether it was, it took five years, three years, 10 years, 12 years. Um, I feel so privileged just to win it because it takes so much. The stars have to align. It, 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 it's a three day affair and everything has to go right. For three days, you have to get lucky. You have to be good, you have to get lucky. Everything has to align yeah. and you know, I just feel fortunate to win too. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, quite the accomplishment. So Todd, uh, let me ask you something personal to me. You know, we, we knew each other, you know, we had shot together, we knew each other, obviously not like we know each other now, but uh, there was a time in 2019 where I, I was having a horrible nationals, um, just really bad rifle, bad attitude, um, and you, uh, no joke, probably saved me from giving up F-Class at that point because I was really close to just throwing it away. What, uh, and, and I know it's not just me, like you're just this kind of person, but like what is it that day, that incident where you said, like, I need to do something to help this guy? Well, John, you're a good guy. I like you. Um, it wasn't that day. It was uh, over a few years that I got to know you. And I, you were struggling and I had an extra rifle, I had extra ammo. And I knew that it, you would probably get some kind of positive influence from shooting it. And, and I just thought it would be a good thing for you. Yeah, well, it was, and I, I appreciate it. I, well, I was happy to do it. Yeah. Well, I remember coming, you, you and Eric were sitting, or you and Jay or you and Eric were sitting on the back of your truck after after I had gotten my medal, and, and like, you had a bigger smile on your face than I did. Of course. <laughs> so. I remember sitting there, it was a COVID year, was it? Uh, yeah. It was a COVID year because we were we were forced to not be up there. Oh, that's right. And, yeah, that's right. And I was up there, and I put a chair up and a spotting scope away from everybody. Yeah. And the ROs kind of walked by and said, I'm watching my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> and I watched you shoot that whole relay, and, and you, you picked your way through it, and it was a strong, it was a strong left to right. And I, I remember it specifically. I yeah. thought, damn, that's, 
You shot it well. You dropped like three points, I think. Yeah. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, 197. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. And I thought, damn, that's a good score. Yeah. And, you know, that's what, that's what this community is about. I mean, it really is. You make connections, you make friends. And um, I've always said that. If you're fortunate enough, you make friends like we're friends. Yeah. You know, we are a group of people that would do just about anything for each other. Yeah. That's the best part about uh, what we do in F class is uh, the relationships we build and friendships we make. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, people always talk about, oh, I'm going to beat you with your own gun. That's actually a good thing. At least for me. Like, if I, if I give you my gun and you beat me with it. Yeah. I'm going to be really happy about it. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you, you, get me. you beat you with your own gun. That's actually a really good thing. Because that shows that I know what I'm doing by tuning a gun. Yeah. And that you know what you're doing by, sh by shooting. And if I give you my gun and you happen to elevate, then that's going to get you pumped up. Yeah. It's going to get you excited. And it's going to get you into the next gear. And you're going to just push even harder. That's... That's, it. That's what I like to see. I like to see the light bulb in shooters that they thought they didn't have it. Yeah. And then you hand them a gun and all of a sudden they realize they do have it. Yeah. And they just, it just turns it on right Yeah. And I, I, like and I remember you were there because, you know, you were like, I knew you could. Yeah. I knew you could. Yeah. <laughs> I and remember that's that. That's what now. I mean. You know, like, it just, like, literally you beat Todd with his own gun. Yeah. But... He didn't care. He was no. happy for you. Oh, yeah. But that just, it just made you realize how good of a shooter you were. Yeah. You just didn't have the right equipment. Yeah. And that just, to me, I love seeing that in a shooter. When they see that, yeah. when that switch flips. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I, I really like that. Todd, you remember, like, maybe one of the toughest strings you ever picked your way through for doesn't necessarily have to be clean, but just where you walked away going, man, I can't believe I, I didn't drop more points. Yeah. When um, the year I won the Southwest Nationals, yeah, the 900-yard string on the first day of Palma was absolutely brutal. And you know how some strings are not brutal for other people? <laughs> They're brutal for you? Yes. And I looked up, and everybody's done. And I, here I am, I still got seven or eight shots to go, and I'm just picking my way through. And it just seemed like I fought for every shot. And I shot it clean, but I remember it to this day as I was had patience, and I didn't let it frustrate me. And I, it, it, it was a, probably the toughest relay for me, even though guys finished early, and cleaned it and walked away like no big deal. For me, it was uh, it was a tough relay, and um, it, it can be that way if you pick your time to get in and stop and and you know start up again. Yeah. And I I probably chose some wrong times to do it, but in the end, I still shot clean. Yeah. And it. it I can look back on it and say that was the toughest relay I ever shot and still didn't drop any points. And that was only, what, the second match of three days of shooting. It so, was. So, like, very pivotal. It set the stage. Yeah. And I, I looked back on it. There, there's several, not several, there's a few relays like that that I look back on that I use for reinforcement. Yeah. When it's kind of, you know, maybe not tough, but I just need something to get the right frame of mind um, yeah. and that's one of them yeah very vivid for you yeah and here it is where the magic happens <laughs> just a quick tour black magic we got a bunch of sebs and some tripods and rear bags three Jaros, two got... super tricklers three charge masters a sartorius all kinds of dies all kinds of components i mean uh barrels Tools. What is that? Oh, Cortina sizing die. And a mandrel die. Nice. It's nice to know the right people. Get that stuff early. <laughs> and well, he, said he, wouldn't, he wouldn't do without a drill trimmer. Yeah. Or three. Or three, yeah. 
And I mean, not to mention Todd does all his own barrel work, uh, stock work. He's a one man band here, so. Anyway. Oh, I saw that. You're putting together a rail gun. I am. Look at that bad boy. Test away, huh? Well, that's the idea. The same as yours? Yeah. So, you I'm got. Gonna bolt this bad boy to it. Oh, so you're going to take an unconventional approach to a rail gun. Well, unconventional is kind of fun. Yeah. You're like, ah, I just got an extra X ring sitting around. <laughs> 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 oh yeah we got a couple stocks there we got a another one up there and then he's got a number of targets you can see one over in the corner there not to mention all the mounts but you know target up there i mean these are all some pretty amazing targets so oh this one John. This, this target's really cool which one Get my glasses. Oh, that looks like it's from Plantation. Yeah. It is from Plantation. Yeah. But that guy landed right there. He ended up being a flag. A fly? A fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saved that. It's That's pretty awesome. So, well, hey, Todd, thank you for uh, letting us into your house. Thank you for, you know, just a great time and for answering all those questions last night. It was fun, and, man. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Great.